Good morning. Good morning. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome you to St. John's as we gather together to give thanks and praise to our Good Shepherd on this Good, uh, good Shepherd Sunday, uh, our Lord Jesus, who uh, cares for us, who provides for us, and who laid down his life for us to take it up again. Our order of service is up on the screen for you to follow along, or if you'd like to follow along in the hymnal, uh, it's on page 203, uh, Divine Service Setting 4. At this time, we now welcome, uh, stand to greet and welcome one another with the peace of our Lord Jesus. I invite you to please stand, and we remember the name that God had placed upon us in our baptisms to claim us as his own precious sheep. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, 
Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie followed by the Gloria. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that we may hear the voice of our shepherd. We may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And our first reading for the fourth Sunday after, uh, of Easter uh, comes from Acts chapter 4, where uh, the apostles are arrested and tried for proclaiming the resurrection of our Lord Jesus and for uh, uh, performing miracles of healing. As they were speaking to the apostles, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, 
by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all of the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, where John explains to us how we are to show love to one another. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, How does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. And in reverence of our Savior Jesus and the gospel, we stand to sing the Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. And here Jesus proclaims himself to be our good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep and takes it up again. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and we invite the children forward for the children's message, and while they come forward, we invite you to fill out the attendance cards that are found in the pews. If you have uh, new uh, contact information, we always appreciate you sharing that with us. And if you have prayer requests, you may include that on the back of the cards uh, for our prayers today. And in preparation for the Lord's Supper, we invite you to uh, uh, study the uh, statements on the back of the cards uh, in preparation and examination for the Lord's Supper today. All right. Good morning, everyone. Do we have everybody? Okay. So this is what I want you to do. 
okay? Do you see everybody up here with us? Okay, take a look around, all right? Just up here. Okay, you see, look around, look at everybody. Now I have a question for you. Do we all look exactly the same? No, we don't look exactly the same, do we? We kind of look the same though, right? We have, this, we have a few things in common, right? Like we all have a body, we have a skin, right? We all have a soul, we're all human, we have that in common, right? But we don't look exactly the same because we're not exactly the same, right? We have boys up here and we have girls up here, right? Is that different? Yeah. Is that a good thing though? Yeah, because God has created boys and God has created girls, right? Girls are supposed to act like girls and boys are supposed to act like boys, right? Yeah, because God created us, created us that way. And it's okay that that's the way it is because that's the way God created us. But one thing that we also have in common though is we are broken. Remember that sinful stuff inside of us? That brokenness? We don't always do the things that we're supposed to do. Like when we don't listen to our teachers or when we don't listen to our parents or we take things that are not ours. Jesus does not like that, does he? That's called a sin. He does not like that at all. But Jesus is also our good shepherd. And he did something for us. What did Jesus do for us? Yeah, he died on the cross for us. And three days later, what did he do? He rose from the dead three days later. And because of that, all of us are forgiven. All of us have eternal life. All because Jesus, the good shepherd, laid down his life for us. So even though we're different, Jesus, our Savior, loves us all. And he died for you and rose from the dead for you. So can you remember that? That Jesus loves you and died for you? Yes. Okay, well, let's go ahead and pray here. We'll have everybody join us. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank you for this day. Thank you for this, day. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for this time together. And thank you for loving us. And thank you for us. Amen. Amen. All right, I'll see you later.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen and living Savior Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Amen. Now this uh, past week, I attended a prison ministry conference down in St. Louis. And you could say that the, uh, that the people attending this conference, those who were presenting there, had a heart for prison ministry. They had a heart for prisoners. They cared for inmates. They have a passion for sharing the gospel with criminals who are in desperate need of hearing of Christ's love and forgiveness for them. And so we can begin to kind of understand this idea of having a heart for something, right? You know, maybe it's uh, you have a heart for, for music ministry, or maybe you have a, a heart for uh, Christian education, or you have a heart, for, uh, a heart for our preschool here at St. John's, or maybe you have a, a heart for children and youth and kids, or you have a, a heart for, for service, for serving others, or you have a heart for sharing the gospel with people. Or maybe you have a heart for the poor, those who are in need. And that really kind of gets us into John's letter for us today. Instead of, uh, only instead of having a heart for the poor and those in need, John speaks about a closed heart, having a closed heart toward them. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, and yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, this ought not to be. Let, uh, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. And so what does it mean for us to close off our hearts to someone? What does that look like? Well, maybe we can go ahead and just kind of stick with the poor here for a moment, right? We've all seen those folks who are sitting along the, the roadside, along the street, who are uh, asking for a handout. And oftentimes we just kind of ignore them, right? We, we pretend like they don't exist, and uh, we go about our ways, right? Uh, and we have people here at, at St. John's who come, come to our, our church on a, uh, on a fairly regular basis, people who are asking for, for help and assistance. Maybe it's for a, a, a night's stay somewhere. They need uh, some food or a gas money, or they're, they're looking for uh, someone to help them pay off a bill or other types of things like that. And if they're really in genuine need, it's really not much of a problem to help somebody else uh, help somebody out, is it? But we get a little bit jaded at times when that person comes in walking in with the latest smartphone, or they reek of alcohol or smoke before they even walk into your office, right? The, some type of indication that uh, they don't have their finances in order. Their financial priorities are all out of whack. And so you can begin to close off your heart toward them and other poor people as well. You see these people who are working the system and it, and, and it just becomes frustrating to the point that it ruins our generosity and our benevolence to those who are in genuine need. We close off our hearts. But it's not just the poor, right? That's what John is uh, directly uh, addressing here. But we close our hearts off to other people as well. You know, maybe your marriage is struggling. You've closed off your heart to your spouse. They can do nothing right. Everything is all their fault. We blame everything on them and we hold this grudge against them. We've closed off our heart to them. And maybe, uh, maybe you've closed off your heart to that weird kid at school, right? 
You know, maybe you're, you're nice to him one-on-one, but once you get together with your, with your group, then the, the whispering and the, uh, and the comments start to be made, and you start picking on this kid behind his back. Or maybe you've closed off your heart if you're a Republican to Democrats. Or if you're a Democrat, you've closed off your heart to a Republican. And, uh, and so uh, uh, you, we, we look at our politicians and we go, man, I really wish we could work together that, uh, that our uh, politicians would do well. But then we hop onto social media and we begin to uh, character assassinate one party over the other, as though they're Satan incarnate. We've closed our hearts off to them. Or maybe if we go back to those criminals in prison, right? The criminal who has committed some type of awful, heinous, gut-wrenchingly terrible crime, we can close our hearts off to them. Right? Now, maybe if they've done something not so bad, we're all right with that. But that dude that's walking down death road, walking that green mile in his final moments of, of life, walking with that preacher who's proclaiming Christ's forgiveness to him. Well, it can be a little hard to imagine that, that individual, that criminal, spending an eternity in heaven with his victim. Right? We've closed our hearts off to them. And so we become kind of like that hired hand, uh, that hired hand that's described for us in John's gospel for today, who cares nothing for the sheep. Right? We can kind of go through the motions, we can get the job done, do what we need to do, but when push comes to shove, when the wolves come in and life gets a little bit hard and we begin being attacked, boy, we abandon ship and flee quickly. Right? We don't, want to have, we don't want to have anything to do with that because we don't really care all that much. We've closed off our hearts to them. We can talk a good talk, but we don't always walk a good walk. But by this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our hearts before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. Jesus, our good shepherd, has a heart for you. He cares for you. He lays down his life for you to take it up again. Even when we've closed off our hearts to others, Jesus opens up his heart to us. For his heart is greater. His heart is bigger. His heart is more compassionate than ours. His heart is more caring than ours. And unlike that hired hand who cares nothing for the sheep, Jesus, our good shepherd, loves you. He cares for you. He loves you deeply that he would do anything for his sheep. Even leave everything behind to go after that one lost sheep. He provides for all of our daily needs. He he takes on the wolves of this world. He takes on this world's evil. He fights Satan himself uh, who comes only to kill and destroy us. Jesus fights for us, leaving behind those scars in his hands, in his feet, and in his side, the battle wounds of that fight. And he does all of this because our good shepherd even lays down his life for us. He lays down his life for his sheep on the cross. Jesus died for the poor. He died for your spouse. He died for that weird kid. He died for the Democrat and the Republican. He died for the criminal in prison. And he died for you. He died for his sheep who have closed off and hardened their hearts to others. And he takes up his life again so that you might have life forever with him. 
So Jesus has not only opened up the grave, but he's also opened up our stony hearts, right? He, by his love, he pries open our hardened hearts to love others just as he has loved us. Now, do we do that perfectly? Absolutely not. For his heart is greater than our heart. But by his love, we want to do better. We want to love as he has loved us. In our right of individual confession and absolution, uh, the penitent sinner confesses, I have not let his, our good shepherds, I have not let Christ's love have its way with me. And so my love for others has failed. I love that picture of not letting Christ have a love have its way with us, right? It gives us this idea that we haven't let Christ's love uh, consume us, to abide in us. We fight against it, right? And so we close off our hearts to others, but then we ask for his forgiveness. I'm sorry for all this and ask for grace. I want to do better. Right? Christ's love for us opens up our closed heart because of his great love for us. He pries open our closed off hearts so that we want to do better, to love as he loves us. And John reflects in this letter, whatever we ask, we receive from him. And so John prays. And so too we pray. We pray that Christ would open up our hearts. That he would open up our hearts by his love to love one another with his great love. Amen. We now stand to confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, confessing Scripture's teaching regarding our triune God who has created us and redeemed us and sanctified us. We confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We thank you for uh, your generosity and giving of your tithes and offerings of those gifts that God has given to you that we may uh, do his work uh, in our world. The offering boxes are located at the uh, entrances of the sanctuary or you may also give online. Our uh, love offering for this month of April is, is going to the River City Domestic Violence Center. Uh, April is uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, uh, and so recognizing that, uh, we, uh, we open up our, our generosity to uh, the Domestic Violence Center where they provide uh, shelter and counseling and training uh, for those who have experienced uh, abuse in their lives. Uh, we continue now with our offertory. Let us pray for the whole church of God and for all people according to their needs. We pray. Lord Jesus, our good shepherd, you have sought out your sheep and gathered us into your flock. Keep us always in your fold and guard us from every wolf and snare in this world. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, you send faithful under-shepherds to us. Call all who have wandered from your flock and bless pastors, DCEs, deaconesses, teachers, and missionaries who gather them through the voice of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son has called us to love our brothers and sisters and turn us in love toward those closest to us, especially within our own homes, that we may daily show our confidence in God by deed and in truth, laying down our lives as Christ did for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, through the Paschal Lamb, you have made peace between God and man. And by your gift of good government, grant peace and good days to our citizens and between the nations of the world, that we may lead quiet lives in godly contentment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by the first fruits of Christ's life from the dead, you have secured eternal life for all who believe. And give health and well-being to all those who suffer among us, especially for those battling cancer, including Jared and Jean, Lindy, Emily, David and Dennis, Dan and Pam, Arliss, Bob, Christy, Forrest and Marvin, Warren, Sheila, Kim, Craig and Linda. Give health and healing to those afflicted with other health concerns, including Stan and Jim, David and Dee, Ruth, Lori, Walter, Lorraine, Lyle, Darlene, and Shelley. Grant them aid in this moment, and uh, even more so, that you would grant them immortal health in the world to come. And grant your comfort and peace to all those who mourn, uh, for the family of Ruth, uh, and for, for Lori as she mourns the death of her father, Leon, for Michelle mourning her brother, Michael, for the family of Shirley, and, uh, and for the family of Roger, that you would assure them of your promises and our good shepherd who laid down his life and took it up again in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, our, our, heavenly, our, our good shepherd, uh, you calm all fears in this valley of the shadow of death, and you prepare this holy table of your son's body and blood for us uh, in the presence of our enemies. And grant us repentant and faithful hearts uh, in every tribulation or sin. Lead us to find comfort and strength in your overflowing mercy given to us in the sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, out of your heavenly, uh, fatherly goodness, you have remembered us, poor, miserable sinners, and given us your beloved Son to be our good shepherd not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and Satan. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that even in, uh, as this good shepherd knows us and helps us in every affliction, we may know him, trust in him, seek help and comfort in him, to obey his voice and obtain eternal salvation by his grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand in preparation for the uh, service of the sacrament. And, uh, and just a reminder that if you desire to receive the common cup, to cross your arms across your chest, uh, and if you uh, uh, are in need of uh, gluten-free wafers, uh, please indicate that to those uh, who are serving, especially for uh, Pastor Jake as he is uh, getting more acquainted with the members of the congregation. Uh, during the distribution, we'd ask that you would uh, prepare and examine yourselves with the statements that will be up on the screen, uh, that we would come worthy and well-prepared to receive the body and blood of our Savior for our forgiveness. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings that you so freely bestow on us and all of creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin. 
giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, be with you always.
stand to sing the Nook Diminis. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning to each of you today in this Good Shepherd Sunday. Uh, we have a town hall meeting following uh, this service over in the Fellowship Hall, and this is uh, simply kind of an up, uh, informational meeting, updates, uh, an opportunity to uh, hear what's going on here uh, in the congregation, and uh, no business will be uh, taken, but uh, all are invited to join us for that town hall meeting. Uh, and then on May 2nd, on that, the National Day of Prayer, we'll be uh, once again uh, providing a prayer service during the noon hour from 12.15 to 12.45. Uh, you're welcome to, to join us here in the sanctuary for that service. We'll also be live streaming it for those who are unable to uh, attend during that noon hour. And uh, our Ascension service will be on Thursday, May 9th. Uh, please note that it will be at the Cottonwood Day Use sh uh, Shelter this year. Instead of up by the Gavin's Point uh, uh, Visitor Center, uh, they're not open yet for the season, uh, and so we had to find an alternate location. Uh, and so we'll be at uh, the, uh, the Cottonwood uh, campsite at their Day Use Shelter there. Uh, potluck picnic beginning at 6 o'clock with the service following at 7. And then it's all Josh's turn from here. Thanks, Pastor Steve. Uh, good morning, everyone. So as you can see on the screen here, uh, don't forget this Friday, April 26th at 6 o'clock here at St. John's, uh, God's Not Dead, movie Under the Cross. Uh, if you can make it, great. Um, it's a really, really good movie, so hopefully you can make it. Uh, next Sunday, April 28th, between services is Gift, Generations and Faith Together. Um, so please be aware that there is no traditional Sunday school next week. Again, it's gift, uh, so just going to be aware of that. Informational meeting for summer trips is April 28th, which again is next Sunday after service. That will be in the Luther Lounge there. It will be a quick meeting, just letting you know of the different trips for families, youth, and children throughout the area. And then the graduate reception for our St. John's graduates, senior graduates, is May 5th between services. So just be aware of that. Celebrate our uh, St. John's seniors who are graduating. And then the Conrad family is starting a faith family uh, starting on May 19th at 6.30 on Sundays. The sign-up sheet for that is back on the blue table. So if you need more information on that, uh, please let me know. And again, a faith family is just simply a Bible study that comes together and learns of God's Word. Um, that's really what it is. It's very fun, simple, and uh, good for fellowship as well. Uh, also, VBS um, is June 23rd through the 26th. Uh, the emails have been sent out. Uh, the registration is out on Facebook, uh, so please be aware of that for planning purposes. Um, it's already that time of year. Uh, also, my last announcement is I would like to announce that after pr um, prayerful consideration, my wife and I are being led to continue our call here at St. John's. Thank you. Thank you. 